he's the he's gonna be all right he's gonna be all right that's a good problem what you all what say happy father's day you guys want to do that so, so be ready for it. I'll call it out. Come, let us sing with joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, he made it. And his hands, they form the dry land. Good. I didn't take a breath before I started singing that. Did you guys notice that? I ran out quick. Good. Uh, uh, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. Very good. Mr. Seth did a good job last week. He did, didn't he? I got some mixed reviews up here just then. Did he do okay? <laughs> I hope he did okay, right? He did good, right? Yeah, he did good. We love Mr. Steph. Oh, look, look, we got some Vacation Bible School leftovers on the screen. You guys want to do this with me? The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the wise man's house stood firm, right? Stood firm, wise man. Build your house on Jesus, stand firm, right? So the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came a-tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the foolish man's house went flat. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come down. Oh, the blessings come down and the prayers go up. The blessings come down and the prayers go up. The blessings come down and the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Very good. Nice necklace. Very good. Very good. Hey, look at this. Some of you guys went to a movie yesterday, right? We had a great crowd. I wanted to show this to everybody before I forgot. But I think we had about 38 or so. You can count them real quick. I think it was around 38 that went and enjoyed a movie yesterday in Lafayette. And uh, we definitely want to do that again. So a great, a great first round. We'll have a second round and maybe a whole bunch of rounds and, uh, and get to do that again. Big thanks to Tammy and all the others that uh, put that together and made that possible. But that was fun. That was fun. I wanted everybody to see that. We got a good picture, too. Why did God make us? To share his image. Somebody said it quick. Yes. Say it together. Why did God make us? To share his image. Very good. What's our purpose? have been talking about this a lot this week. What's our purpose? You got it, Cadence. Very good. To glorify and enjoy God. Very good. To glorify and to enjoy God. What is success? Very good. You guys are nailing these. Seth must have done a good job, right? Living for God and with him forever. That is success, okay? But failure is what then? Very good. Living for yourself, okay? Living, living selfishly. Not being a servant is what we're going to talk about today. Not being a servant and then without God forever. That's right. That is, that is failure. So why does any, any of this make sense? This is really important. All this makes sense because God is... So very good. How good is God? So now, I heard you guys, but I didn't hear them. How good is God? So I think I still heard you guys, actually. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Hey, they want to do something for, for our fathers. You guys ready? One, two, three. Happy Father's Day. That sounded pretty weak. <laughs> <laughs> sounded pretty weak. You guys got to say it like you mean it, right? We make them say it like they mean it. You got to say it like you mean it. One, two, three. Happy, Happy Father's Day. Day. <laughs> very good. Very good. We've been working on a deep voice, you know, deep resonating voice for a while. They've still got the little screech voice, but we're working on it, right? Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, right? Happy Father's Day. Man, we're pumped about our dads in here today. This is really important. What cures worry? Loving your neighbor. Well, that's a good one. Cadence said loving your neighbor. That's a huge one, right? If, we, if all we ever thought about was how to love people and help people and be kind to people, that would take care of a lot of our worry. What did Jesus say exactly in Matthew 6? Good. Seeking the kingdom first. That's the way that Jesus said it, which absolutely means loving your neighbor. Okay, that's a great answer. 
And so when we seek what God wants first, when we seek his kingdom, his way first, Jesus told us that our worries will disappear. Poof. Gone. Okay? Seeking the kingdom first. What's the greatest command? God. God. That's always a great answer, right? The greatest command. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and might. Very good. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and all of your might. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Very good. So that's the greatest commandment. Jesus taught that. Then what's the, great, the second greatest commandment? I've heard it once already. To love your neighbor as yourself, right? To, 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 to hate your neighbor? No. To hate your enemies? No. But to love your neighbor, even your enemies. To love everyone as you love yourself, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. Very good. The second greatest commandment. What's the great commission? Still kind of new for us. A lot of words in this. But if we look at it every week, every week if we look at it, and if we really pay attention to those, to those yellow words, then we can get this. Very good. Make disciples, baptize them, teach them. That's an excellent summary. You guys want to read it with me? Let's, let's try to read it together. Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to follow all that Jesus commands. That's what Jesus told his people to do, right? Is that, is that, is that, is that really tough to do? Sometimes it can be tough, right? But if we love Jesus and if we believe in his way, then we'll enjoy making disciples of the nations. You know what? We will. It's really good. What's the next thing here? <clears throat> How many books in the New Testament? 27. 27. How many in the old, Adeline? Adeline, sorry. 39. Very good. Adeline, good. So 27, 39. You want to say the New Testament books? Super fast, super slow? Super fast. Okay. Let's try it. Let's, let's, let's make sure we pay attention, though. You ready? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts and letter to the Romans. First and second Corinthians. Galatians and Ephesians. Philippians, Colossians. First and second Thessalonians. First and second Timothy. Titus and Philemon. Hebrews, James. First and second Peter. First and second and third John. Jude and Revelation. Very good. Let's say the Old Testament books. I heard you guys last week. I, I, I tuned in and got to see a little bit. Last week I heard you guys saying this. Same with me. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Very good. I heard somebody say this week they were so impressed that somebody knew the books of the Bible. And I was thinking, we practice the books of the Bible every week, every week. We're going to learn them, aren't we? You guys are doing so great, so great. Give me a fruit. Cadence, you got one? Kiwi, wee! Give me fruit. Dragon fruit, ah, give me fruit. What? Roast beef, love it, love it. Give me fruit. Pineapple, that's a good one, we do this. What's, give me fruit. Cherry, I knew you were going to say that. I was looking at you. We were both thinking cherry. Isn't that cool? We just hold up and shake cherries. Can we do that? Let's do a back row first, and then we'll do a front row. The fruit of the spirit is not a kiwi. Whee! Or a dragon fruit. Rawr. Or a roast beef. Go to Arby's. Get you good roast beef, right? Or a pineapple. Or a cherries. Fruit of the spirit's not that. If you want to be that, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Whoa, whoa. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Give me a front row. You got a fruit? I'm nervous. Hamburger? Oh, my. Give me a fruit. Got one, Zoe? Hamburger? A cheeseburger. Got it. Hamburger and a cheeseburger. G got a fruit? Lemon? Got a fruit? Apple? <laughs> got a fruit? Corn? Yeah. Really? Hey, that's cool. We want to eat it like a corn contest? You got a fruit? Chicken wings. I'm going to tell your mother on you. You got a fruit? Tacos? Yes. Look at this. You got a fruit? Not what's in your nose, buddy. Uh-uh. Chicken wing. All right, so we got some chicken wings. I'm, I've already forgot. The fruit of the spirit's not a hamburger or a cheeseburger or an apple or a, a lemon. Or an apple, or a corn, get in your teeth, right? Or a chicken wing, you want to fly like a chicken wing? Yeah, or a taco, they're just so yummy. I'm just, you just distracted me because I just love tacos. Or another chicken wing, the fruit of the spirit's not any of that. Now let's pay attention, right? If you want to be that, you might as well hear it. 
You can't be a fruit of the Spirit because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Whoa, whoa. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Today I'm going to talk about how Jesus was gentle. He was gentle. Sometimes he probably could have got pretty mad, pretty upset, pretty disappointed, but he was gentle. Do you want to be gentle? I want to be gentle. Fruit of the Spirit, gentle. Sing this with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord. Very good, very good. Pray with me, pray with me. God, thank you so much. Uh, it's just refreshing and wonderful and uh, filling, uh, Father, to, um, to get to love kids and teach them things that are just so good. And so in a world that tries to distract them and pull them away from the reason they were made and the purpose that they exist, Father, I pray that we will uh, embrace your way of love and kindness, of peace, of patience, of joy, of gentleness, and just help us be people that take very serious um, teaching and modeling your way to our children. And we do, and I thank you for that. Bless our congregation. Bless these kids, Father. May they grow in you and us grow together. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. You guys are great. Thank you. Great job. We just wrapped up. <laughs> you made it, though. You made it. You made it. Good morning, good morning. Doesn't that air conditioner feel good? Thank you, Mr. Fred, for keeping us going here. Um, happy Father's Day. Uh, I just, um, I hope that uh, your day is flooded with memories of your dad, uh, what, uh, what he did, all the memories, and I just, I just love... Um, the family dynamic, and I think it's just, uh, I thank God uh, that's just his, uh, one of his greatest um, thought processes and achievements, and, and um, we're commanded to honor our fathers and our mothers, and even though grilling a mistake is real nice, you honor your father by righteousness and everything that entails. And I just thank you for being here this morning. I thank you, those of you with children, for bringing your kids. Uh, it's, just, it's just wonderful. Um, lots of stuff here. Um, I wish I wrote better, but maybe I can decipher. Uh, first thing, Steve Kendall's mom uh, has a blockage in her right shoulder and is cutting off the circulations to her arm and without surgery uh, she is uh, probably will lose her arm and so it's not scheduled but it, hopefully real soon uh, they'll go and harvest a vein and, and try to do some bypass for her shoulder please keep her in her prayers Helen is that right Steve yes okay um, also um, Donna Riddle uh, is home with kidney stone issue, and Kenny Whitaker has not yet had his surgery uh, for his big one, so please uh, keep continuing to pray for Kenny. Um, Grayson's friend, Katie Rogers, fell off a fourth-store balcony. She's in Vanderbilt ICU. She's got a brain bleed, a broken ribs, pelvis, and uh, um, pretty bad shape, so please um, remember uh, Katie Rogers. Also, um, Randy tells me that uh, Shelly Martin is suffering from ALS. I'm sure many of you know her and Richard, and Richard, of course, cares for her, and she's starting to have some uh, serious breathing issues, and so please uh, remember her. Um, uh, that may be all I've written down. Um, the, the clothing giveaway, and that is Saturday the 23rd, Saturday, July the 23rd. 
And what we're doing is community outreach. We have new clothes uh, that, that have been purchased by you, uh, volunteers, and, 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 uh, and so what we need, I think it's from, is it going to be 9 to 11, 9 to 5? I told you I wrote bad. All right, 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the July the 23rd. And what we'd like is if you can help uh, man that store. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet on the table out in the foyer. And if you would sign up and, and uh, um, do that. And we're really, really excited about that. And thank all those who have been uh, involved. Um, Uh, in in uh, commemoration Father's Day, uh, a lot of people have family stuff going on, and it's a lot of people out of town, so we have suspended our study of John tonight. We'll pick it up, Lord willing, next week at 5 o'clock, but, but tonight uh, we have uh, canceled the, the John study, and hopefully that you can spend time uh, with your dad or with your family, with your kids or, or, or whatever. Uh, also, our encouragement card of the week this week is Jeff Green, and, and we would like everyone to uh, write him a note and thank him. He served as an elder here for eight years, and we just thank him for his service to, to God, the church, Old Union in particular. And uh, so his, his uh, address is in the bulletin, so please um, get that. Also, I just saw Kathy Haynes' mom had a hip replacement surgery, so she and I are in the same club, uh, so please pray for her. Uh, birthdays, the 19th, Carter Simpson, 21st, Tony Simpson, the 24th, uh, Clifford Averett, and also Roman Smith, and the 25th, uh, Colby Bickerton. Anniversaries, the 23rd, Roger and Nancy um, Cox. I think that's all I have, can decipher anyway out of my notes. Um, and when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, you are no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the power and the honor and the glory forever. In the name of Jesus, amen. We'll be singing number 660, There is a Habitation. We'll sing all the verses. <clears throat> I've been suffering with sinus mess for the last two weeks, so if I get to coughing, just keep right on going. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation to seek that grand abode. Oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gates to see. Oh, 
stand for this song and after this song we'll have our prayer.
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this uh, morning you've given us to wake up to beautiful sunshine and uh, cooler weather than this past week, but we thank you for all types of weather and buildings uh, that we can construct to keep us safe from them and sing comfort, dear Lord, and we ask that you allow us to uh, be mindful of that, that comfortableness that we have in this in this world, dear Lord, and take advantage of it to go and spread your word and spread the gospel. Lord, as we uh, go to class now, that we ask that you uh, keep our minds open and ready to hear the lessons and ask that you prepare the uh, teachers with a ready recollection of what they've studied, dear Lord. And we just want to thank you for the time that they've taken out of their day, their week, to prepare a lesson. Lord, we want to thank you for your son who uh, came down and died on the cross for our sins. And we ask that you uh, keep us mindful of his sacrifice and, and, and the love he gave for us that um, he died for everyone and, and every sin that was ever made, dear Lord. And we just thank you so much for that forgiveness and that grace and mercy that is shed on us every single day. We ask that you allow us to keep mindful of that so that we can take that out and share it with the with the world their lord please go with us now forgive us for our sins and it's in jesus name i pray amen scripture reading will be from Luke chapter 22 verses 24 through 34. A dispute also arose among them as to which they considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, the king of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table, but I am among you as one who serves? <clears throat> you are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer you a kingdom just as my Father conferred on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom and sit on the thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. 
Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all you as wheat. But I pray for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, to strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to the prison of death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, I will not <clears throat> deny you three times that you know me. I want to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this day and all the many blessings that you give us. Um, I'm grateful for this church and what it means to me and what it has meant to me. Um, ever since I was born, I've been going here. Um, I want to I want to say thank you for Brother Jeff Green. Um, he's been fighting a battle for the past three years. Um, he's kind of stood alone, I feel like. Um, and I want to thank you for him. He stood up in this church um, when there was wrong. And um, I'm grateful for that. The man that he was, um, the example he was, um, Lord, just be with him and help him and guide him. Um, and be with us as, as a part of this church and guide us, um, direct us, direct this church in the right way. Um, and let us do right and what's uh, according to the Bible. Um, I hope we strive for that each and every day. Lord, I love this place and I love the people here. Um, I just hope that everything works out. Um, just God, guard and direct us. And we're grateful for your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came down and died on the cross for the mission of our sin. It's in Jesus' precious and holy name I do pray. Amen. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good. It's good to be with you this morning. I mean that. I've missed you. It's good to be back with you. Uh, happy Father's Day, okay? We're going to talk about our fathers for just a little bit, and then we're going to dive into what Casey read for us out of Luke 22. Uh, but man, it's good to be with you today. And so dads, I hope you feel honored today. Uh, I do. I hope you feel encouraged to keep leading and loving and transferring great blessings to your kids. Okay? We lead. We love. And we transfer great blessings of God to our kids, and I hope you're doing that. Uh, my dad has done that to me. I'm very thankful for him. I couldn't help but think of some things he's transferred to me. And this week, he was just on point with some dad jokes. You know, <laughs> he, uh, he transferred all kinds of good ones to me this week. I'm not sure if this week was, he was building up for Father's Day or what. Um, he told me this one, and I thought this was good for you guys, too. He gave me a warning. He said, it's hot outside. Be careful. Uh, I know it's hot because I saw a dog chasing a cat, and they were both walking. <laughs> Cares about me, right? You know it's a dad joke when you, you kind of want to cringe, and you kind of want to laugh, but like, you just, you're stuck in the middle, you know? Uh, he's warned me before to be careful on the stairs over here, because they're always up to something. <laughs> and again, cringe, laugh, I don't know, but... Uh, I love you, Dad. I'm thankful for you. Uh, you've encouraged me to, uh, to pursue God, and uh, that's the greatest gift that you could ever give me. And so thank you for that. Um, I found my mind searching this week for a reference to fathers in Scripture and the one. There's so many, uh, obviously, but um, I had never before emphasized the earliest reference to a father that we find in Genesis 2. And, and you're probably very familiar with this. Uh, after the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man, and after the man responded and said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, then God responded, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And so there's our first specific reference, I guess, with the word father in the Bible. And there's a lot that we can make of that text. In fact, it's kind of difficult to take that and build it into a you know, Father's Day application. But I always like to look at the, the heart of you know, the, the, the essential nature of what's going on in texts like this. And what I see is that raising children involves giving them up. Uh, raising children involves letting them be joined to another. Specifically in this text, we see a child being given to join um, a spouse, husband or a wife. And so um, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about how is not 
the purpose of a godly father to raise a child in such a way that we can give them, we do give them to the Lord. Uh, we, we, we prepare them for a relationship with our father, uh, with the father, the good father. And so I enjoyed thinking about that this week and how uh, the first reference was to a child being given, being joined to another, and how my purpose as a father is to help my child be joined to the father. And I hope that blesses you. I hope that encourages you as fathers in here. I think that sometimes I've been guilty of this. I think it, you know, sometimes on Mother's Day we honor our mothers. We make them feel really good. But then sometimes preachers on Father's Day get up here and we hit our fathers pretty hard, you know. And, and I don't want to do that today. Uh, I, I need encouraging. I want to encourage you as fathers this morning um, that it's a good thing to be a dad. It's a really good thing. And so um, be intentional with your kids. I was talking to a friend about that yesterday, a new father, about that yesterday in my office. Be intentional with your kids, uh, intentional in preparing them and supporting them. And, and uh, sometimes the world will think you're crazy for doing what you do, but do it, do it with love and do it with your heart and do it with intention for the father. And uh, that's just a really great thing. It's a good thing to be a dad, you guys. It's a good thing. Uh, I know that this day is hard for, for many, and I try to, it's always difficult to, to talk about things like this on days like this because you just want to reach everybody. You know, you want to reach into the heart of everyone. I said that on Mother's Day. And I know that there are a lot here. We have a tremendous amount here who are uh, without a father for the first time uh, this year on Father's Day, and that's a, that's a big deal. And so I uh, just know that this church family loves you and cares about you. And, and um, again, I, I intend to, to point us to God, all of us to God, wherever we are, to point us to God this morning. Uh, I heard, a, to, to get lighthearted a little bit again, I heard a dad say to his adult kids once that when he dies, he wanted to be cremated so that he could have a smoking hot bod. Isn't that cool? <laughs> all these dad jokes, they're just great. Um, so my kids aren't in here, um, and, and, and I share that with them not being in here, because I remember thinking I'm going to store that away and use that for them uh, in the future. But um, again, to segue into just good thought, you know, there's, there's so many things that I don't have to keep from my kids. And, and the most important thing for me to always share with them and never wait to tell them about is how much the good father loves them and wants them. That's huge, you guys. Every week we sit, we sit down here with our kids and we try to indicate to them that there's a good creator who wants them who really wants them. And so uh, I don't have to wait to share that with them, and you guys don't either. You dads don't either. Um, help your kids see that there's a good God who wants them, that just wants to bless them and share himself with them. Does that sound familiar? There's a really good God that just wants to love them and bless them and just share himself with them. And so um, I thought about it. Um, I would love for, you know, dads to just be recognized in some way. I didn't get this approved or anything, but... Um, how about you just raise your hand? That's pretty easy. We got dads in here. Raise your hand high if you're if you're a dad. Amen. Amen. Let me let me pray for you. Can we pray for you, dads? God, we do celebrate dads in here today, and um, we honor them. And I pray that in this moment uh, they feel the highest honor of um, being servants in your plan to grow and to give children back to you. Um, uh, thank you for uh, mothers, too. Um, we, can't, we can't neglect them on the day we celebrate fathers and just how it's, it's this perfect design uh, for a man and a woman to, to raise children and to love children and for them to see you in both of their nature and to love you and, and, and to lead them to you. And so, just God, I just praise you. And again, specifically today, I pray that our fathers are encouraged and uplifted um, to be intentional. And I thank you for a place like this where we can league together in that intention and uh, pursue you. And so, thank you. We love you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's been a really good week. Uh, it's been a really, really good week. Uh, I wanted to to tell you guys some things that uh, sometimes I just pause and I take a minute to, to make sure you're aware of some things. So I didn't get to be here last Sunday, uh, but I hear that there were over 40 in attendance at Charter um, Assisted Living um, for, the, for bringing the kids back day, whatever we call that. Uh, man, those have been missed, and that's really cool that there were that many over there blessing the residents at Charter. Uh, I heard that there was a good crowd who came back here, about a dozen or so, who came back and shared lunch together, so that's really cool. Uh, be be um, 
mindful and attentive to that coming up again. I know that'll happen again. Um, I was at a gospel meeting this week at Rock Bridge, and uh, I was very thankful for that congregation, but found myself throughout the week just very thankful for you guys and uh, missing Old Union. And uh, I felt, I felt the, the, the way of the Spirit. I know that's language we don't use a lot, but I just felt a good presence, a good, a good Spirit presence there. Uh, the people were kind and welcoming and good to my family. They were attentive and thankful and and it was so nice, and, and, I, and I told them, I said, you guys remind me of Old Union, and I'm very thankful and, and positive about the direction of that congregation. I love their preacher there, Rich Shockley. He's been here with us before. And, you know, it was really cool because my lessons just kind of turned into just Jesus lessons. You've heard this a lot this year, just Jesus. And we talked about how good Jesus is and how we have tr trouble seeing God sometimes, but Jesus is the perfect reflection of God. And so if we have trouble seeing God, consider just learning and seeing and knowing Jesus and the nature of God, the character of God in Jesus. It was great. It really was. Um, Wednesday night, um, <laughs> I didn't get to be here again. I missed you guys, but uh, I did help prepare some watermelon for you all to eat. And man, y'all ate some watermelon, like, like two whole sliced watermelons gone. I came in the refrigerator expecting to share some uh, Thursday. They were gone. And so Hey, uh, you, you don't need any more incentive to come on Wednesday. We have Bible classes. We have good um, uh, lessons. Uh, Daryl's teaching through Psalms downstairs. We've got stuff for our teens. But, hey, we got watermelon after service. And it's summer and it's hot and the watermelon's cold. And so uh, it was really good. Went to Summer Youth Series this Thursday. Took a few kids, took some that haven't been before. Uh, the speaker really, really encouraged me. Um, a couple of one-line things. If you don't know about Summer Youth Series, every, every Thursday in the summer, the teens are invited to get on the bus at 6 p.m., and we go to area congregations. The singing is awesome. Kids will sing. I tell you guys, they'll sing, and I don't encourage, I don't, I don't, I don't try to wear you out. I really don't try to wear you out, but just know there's a generation of kids that'll sing, and so uh, it's really neat to think about that. Uh, let's, let's, let's join them in that singing, but the singing's always great on Thursdays. We had a good crowd. The speaker said something that I wrote down that I want to remember. He said, you can't be a family without grace. I love that. You can't be a family without grace. Uh, we can't be a family here without being graceful toward one another. Uh, helping each other, um, encouraging each other. Um, you know, we always want people to think everything the same way that we think. You know what? That is not grace. We can't be a family without grace. I loved how the speaker indicated that. I even had a guy text me and say, can he say that in the pulpit? Yes, he can. You can't be a family of God without grace. It was a really good message. And then we had 38 in, at the Lafayette Cinema yesterday. We watched Homeward Bound, and some of y'all were crying. I told you the dog didn't die. But man, I hear all this crying and moping. You guys know me. It always gives me a little lump in the throat, too. Or it might have been allergies, Danny. I don't know, but... Uh, we just had a really good day yesterday. Um, camp is coming up. We got a good crew going to camp, leaving Sunday, and and we have neglected to tell you that uh, camp always needs cookies. Always needs cookies. Doesn't have to be homemade cookies, but always needs cookies, snacks, you know, little things that they can give to the kids at night. And so throughout this week, if you could help with that, that'd be great. I'll be here a lot. We just need to, if we can just collect them in the fellowship hall, we'll load them up and take them next Sunday to Bible camp. But if you can just donate a box of cookies, man, that would go a long way uh, for helping out the kids at camp this week. Um, I've prayed once, but I always like to, when my mind's going everywhere, I like to settle us back into the text. So let's direct our minds to Luke 22. Pray with me again, and then we'll, we'll dig into this text. Uh, Father, I thank you. Um, I thank you for an active congregation. Uh, I thank you for uh, things that, uh, that you prepare us for and opportunities that you place before us. And so I just ask uh, for you to continue to do that. But, Father, I believe, I know that these activities, these events, I believe that they are spurred on and given to us as we adhere to the teachings of Jesus. And so while it's really great, I'm really excited. You know how excited I am to talk about the things that we do. I pray that they are rooted in your nature that we learn from Jesus. And so help us, help, help me get my mind into Luke 22 and help us to focus on 
uh, being a servant and being the greatest in the kingdom because of our heart of service and help change us and transform us into those people. God, we love you and we praise you, and it's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. So uh, Luke 22, thank you, Casey, for that reading. Uh, it began by saying in verse 24 that there arose also a dispute among them as to which one would be regarded or was regarded as the greatest. Okay, neat thing here. These are the disciples of Jesus. Okay, the very disciples of Jesus are disputing. I was reading this a lot this week, and I was, you know, various thoughts going through my mind, but I find myself thankful. Can you be thankful with me for just a minute? How many of y'all are in here with your, with your perfection on? You know what? How many of you got it all figured out? You've done it all right. You never made any mistakes, right? Interpreted everything correctly, applied it the best. How, anybody? You want to raise your hands for that? No. And isn't it wonderful that we have this example in the very disciples of Jesus, the ones that he specifically called and said, follow me and get on mission with me. That's really neat, okay? And so my mind was, was going to Scripture. You know, I was thinking about Scripture, and I recalled these words. Again, it reminds me of how God chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the so-called wise. He called a bunch of imperfect dudes to come follow him and make disciples. I love that. Again, he chooses the foolish things to shame the wise. He chooses the weak things of the world to shame the so-called strong. He chooses the base things and the despised of the world and the things that are not to cancel out the things that are. I know that's really biblical, <laughs> but again, he does this so that none of us can boast. You don't have to come in here today perfect. In fact, if you are, then I don't guess the gospel is really for you, right? Jesus said, I came to, to rescue sinners. I came to rescue the lost. So, 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 so take, let that guard down. Let it off. Embrace with me for just a minute and be thankful that these guys were guys just like us. And oh yeah, they argued. They argued. They disputed. Um, this is really incredible to think about because this is nearing the end of Jesus' time with them. That means that... that, that, that that they're at the end of the course, so to speak, you know, and here they are getting at each other. What does Jesus do? This is so good. He doesn't, he doesn't rip into them, <laughs> as so often my nature is to do. He doesn't get excited and, you know, and just oh, really tear them down. No, he's gentle. That's where I was going with the kids this morning. The fruit of the Spirit prevails in the heart of Jesus. He's gentle. He's patient so good what he does here and I want to share this with you okay uh, again amazing disciples imperfect just like us often consumed by their own pride just like us yet chosen of God called out by Jesus and on mission for the kingdom of his father okay here we see them for real and I love that and again Jesus is gentle there's this old song I haven't heard this on the radio in a while it had it, I don't I guess it's lost its popularity but there's this old song that, that came to my mind. I've been singing it this week, so now you get to sing it with me if you know it. Remind me who I am. Do you guys remember this song? Remind me who I am. Uh, when I lose my way, when I forget my name, God, remind me who I am. In the mirror, when all I can see is who I don't want to be. Have you been there? You stared at that face in the mirror and thought, man, how did I get here and who am I? I love this, long, uh, this line. In the mirror, when I, all I see is who I don't want to be. Remind me who I am. When I'm in my loneliest places and I can't remember what grace is. That's a cr clever rhyme there. Did you catch that? When I'm in lonely places and I can't remember what grace is. Again, tell me who I am. Lest I forget, tell me who I am. And then this is the line, that I belong to you. That I belong to you. Remind me who I am, that I belong to you. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Um, and, and, and that's what this scene reminds me of. Jesus just gently communicates with these guys. And he says, let me, let me remind you what we're about. And he does that first by reminding them who he is. Isn't that cool? Let me, let me remind you what I called you to. Let me remind you who I am. Okay? Uh, Luke's account, if you're, if you're following there with me, uh, Luke's account of the disciples' dispute indicates that they were arguing over which one was going to be the traitor. Can you jump into that with me real quick? All right, which one of us isn't as good as the rest of us? Right? Surely not me, 
right? Surely I'm the, the good one, the right one, you know? This is, this is what's going on here. Again, Luke indicates they're arguing over which one of them was going to be the traitor. They were passionate about following Jesus, and I love that. I love that. I just hate when we just, that passion turns into nasty arguing, but they were, they were passionate about Jesus, okay? Who's going to betray him? Surely not me. I bet it's that, you know, you know, surely. Okay, we know it was Judas. We know it was Judas. Uh, Luke had told us that earlier in the chapter, but the disciples don't know that it's Judas. And so I imagine this scene is getting really awkward really quick. You know, it's getting pretty contentious really fast here. And again, Jesus reminds them who he is. Let me read that again with you. This is Luke 22, beginning in verse 25, okay? He said, this is beautiful. A little difficult, maybe, but beautiful. He said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them. Um, when Jesus makes references to Gentiles, he's, he's referring to people who are not followers of his father. That's the best way for me to explain that quickly. Now, Jews and Gentiles are all called to be in the nation, or are called to be in the kingdom of God. And so that's, that's part of this truth, that everyone is called to a seat at the table, regardless of your nationality, your skin color, your economic, socioeconomic status. Okay, we know this. I hope we plead this a lot from the pulpit. Sometimes we can be not so great about really wanting people who are different than us. That is not the gospel of Jesus. But when Jesus makes references like this, he's just referring to the way that the world outside of, of, of following his father tends to act. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. And so he's calling their attention to the kings and the leaders of earth. And what do they do over their subjects? They lord over them. Right, good. They, 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 they subject them to their authority. Okay, they, they oppress them. Uh, leaders of the world elevate themselves over others and get accolade for doing it. Okay, they get titles. Um, this is the language of the text here. Uh, it's really cool. The Bible's cool, right? The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them. And those who have authority over them are called benefactors. They get titles, prestigious titles. But then in verse 26, but it is not this way with you. This isn't how the kingdom of God's going to be. But the one who is the greatest among you must become like the youngest. And the leader must become like the servant. And then he asks them a question. For who is greater, the one who reclines at the table or the one who serves? And then, and then he's speaking to them according to the world's terms here. He says, is it not the one who reclines at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. This is our Jesus. This is our King. This is our Savior. I got, to talk, I got to say that a lot at Rock Bridge this week. Yeah, this is the guy that we follow, and this is really cool. Again, the language may be a little difficult for you, but I hope you followed that with me. Okay, it's for us to consider Jesus' way of leadership versus the world's way of leadership. And, um, and that should help us make more sense of it. Jesus' way versus the world's way. Now, if you're like me, this is like, I don't, let me, I did, this is not in my notes, um, if you're like me, this is like early Christian teaching. You know, this is like the stuff you, you learned in Bible class when you were a kid. I think all of us could probably say, yeah, Jesus is about service, right? Jesus is about serving others, right? That's, that's, that's pretty common language among, Christianity, uh, among Christians. But let's just really make this get into us some. Okay, let's, let's let this open us up and then really consider how uh, we apply Jesus as a servant and his followers being called to be servants. Um, consider how we treat those who labor intensively to clean up after us. Uh, consider how we think of them. Maybe we don't treat them that bad. We probably don't say bad stuff to them, right? Christians don't do that. But consider how we think of people who labor intensively to clean up after us, to serve us. Uh, consider our servants at restaurants. I was communicating this lesson to someone the other day, and again, I don't, I'm not ill with Miss Sherry every Thursday at Mary's, but do, but do I think of myself as a better person than her? 
Um, think of how we treat people who assist daily in, in, in necessary um, uh, help to, to higher ranking people. Um, somebody gave me great advice one time. I was a teacher for a few years. That's what I graduated from MTSU to do. And I don't remember who told me this, but it stuck with me. They said, Stephen, there's, there's, there's two people you want to treat best. I said, treat your office secretary. Have you heard this? Your office administrator, your office assistant, right? To treat them the best and treat the janitorial staff the best. That was great advice for me. Because it was so easy in my mind to think, you know what, I got that four-year degree and certificate to go along with it, Miss Donna. And here I come up into this place having my degree, and I'm a teacher. <sighs> Again, we, 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 don't, we don't say awful things, hopefully. <laughs> but how do we think about this? How do we think of people who, who, who are different than us, socioeconomically? How do, how do we think about people who haven't achieved status to the degree that we think we have? Again, this is the lesson of Jesus. Um, it's the positions of higher rank that hold the respectable, ti the, the, the respectable titles in our world. Again, like benefactors, he would indicate. And, um, and we find ourselves much rather wanting to be the person who gets to recline at the table than the one who serves the table. But as Jesus often does, and let him do this to you this morning, he flips the script. He turns it upside down. Okay? He says that the greatest among us will be as the youngest. Like, really, though? And he says the leader will be the servant. Okay, so this is cool, because this is where John's gospel does something that I know has moved you. If, if, if you haven't been moved by what John's gospel includes, then you may not be aware of it, or you may just haven't let it penetrate your heart. This is the point in John's gospel where he indicates that Jesus does what? Any of you know? He girds himself with a towel, and he gets down, and he washes the disciples' feet. This is what John includes in his gospel. Can I, can I read some of that? If you don't, I, I haven't done this a lot. We've been in Luke, and I've tried to stay in Luke. But if you don't mind, for just a minute, John 13, okay? John 13, beginning in verse 12. Actually, the, the actual account of him washing the disciples' feet is in verse 5 and following. I'll read that in just a minute. But what I want to just show you is the parallel lesson here. After he washes the disciples' feet in John 13, now look at verse 12. Okay, He says, do you know what I have done to you? That's the last line in verse 12. Again, he's just washed their feet. He says, you call me teacher, and you call me Lord, and you are right. I love that line. I've, I've just washed your feet, and, 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 and don't misunderstand me now. You call me teacher, you call me Lord, I'm, you're, you're right, okay? Um, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I give you an example that you also should do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. You see this. Jesus isn't just indicating we act like this isn't true. Jesus is saying this is true. A slave is not greater than his master. Um... And the one who sent is not greater than the one who sent him. Again, reversing the role. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Okay? I've, I've, I've wondered. Perhaps you have too. I think I'm, 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 this is the only place, the only gospel account that references Jesus washing their feet. Why would that be? It's okay to think about things like this, I think. Why would that be? Why not? Why wouldn't Matthew? Matthew was there. Uh, Mark, a later disciple, but still. Luke, why wouldn't they include these things? I don't know. We can speculate. We can, I love talking. This is coffee conversation I was saying at Rock Bridge. I love to talk about these things. But might it be that this was, this was really a big deal for Jesus to do? 
And I, I, don't, I don't know about you. Again, I'm totally speculating here. So don't, 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 don't take this for gospel. I'm totally speculating here. But what if guys like Matthew, Mark, and Luke were just almost too, too, too humiliated? You know, too, uh, this was such a humble thing for Jesus to do that maybe even they were just a little hesitant to include our Lord as the feet washer. Maybe they were thinking, we don't want to include that because we should have been the ones washing the feet. Maybe that's what they were thinking. That, that could be more likely. I don't know. But this is just really amazing that this is what Jesus, the Lord and the teacher, was doing. Again, not as a show, not as an act, because th this is what we're pleading to our kids. But because the God of heaven, perfectly imaged in Jesus the Christ, wants to bless you. And he values you. And there's, and there's not this, this di there, there, there aren't these differing planes for how important you are versus someone else. Get that out of your head. It's, it, can, 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 can I, I'm, I'm, there's something I want to address. Is it okay? I don't know. <laughs> I'll just say it this way. New people here, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome to the family of God. New people here, you're welcome. You're welcome. You, you come in here as sinners. You come in here as hurting. You come in here as any kind of status. You come in here, you're welcome. And it's, and it's, and it's really great that this place has existed for a long, long time. That's really great. I'm really proud of it. No, no one can rightfully accuse me of not being proud of this congregation. 1834. But new people, you're welcome. And you're not on a different plane than me or anyone who's been here their whole life. You're welcome. This is the lesson of Jesus. We don't fake it. We don't just word it or act like it's true. No, it is true. If this is a church of Jesus, this is true. Okay? And so this is the lesson. Um, so, so, so again, um, I, I told you something really cool here. So like, um, Jesus could have so, and, 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 uh, later in John, again, this is all that John just stretches it. He just stretches it. And so I didn't want to skip over that in the same context is where John says, this is how you'll know that you're my, that you're my disciples. Jesus said that John recorded it. They will know that you are disciples of Jesus if you have this radical acceptance of people who are different. I'm not saying we accommodate sin. I'm not saying that, all right? But sinners are welcome to hear the gospel, to be changed by it, and to belong to the family of God. I hope you understand. This is how, this is how my church and my disciples will be known for how you have this crazy radical love that equals the playing field. This is how you'll know. And this is amazing, okay? Um, Jesus, um, man, I love this guy. And uh, I, pray that you, uh, that I, I pray that you do too with me, okay? Um, so all of this is, is, is really good, I think. It's really important for us to understand. But, but I want to show you this. Um, back in Luke 22, if you don't mind going back there. And so think about this with me. I mentioned this a minute ago. These guys are at the end of the course. They have, they have walked the road with him. They've gone the journey. And here they are at each other. Pride has surfaced once again. Who's the greatest? Who's better? Surely not I. I'm not the betrayer. Maybe it's you. Okay? So they've run the course, and here they are. If, if I'm glad I'm not the Lord Jesus, I, I, can't, I can't be the Lord Jesus. Because if you... If you've been, if, like, like, I'll try to teach the kids something in the teen room, and then later that class, they'll do something crazy that I just said, you know? You know, you know how that works, how, how, how quick we can get frustrated and things like this. They have just gone the course with Jesus. They're arguing with each other. Their pride is surfacing. And what does Jesus do? Gentle. Patient. He reminds them who they are. Isn't this so good? I love this line so much. 
in verse 28. It seems kind of out of place, but it's so like Jesus. He says, you are those who have stood by me in my trials. You see that? Remember who you are. Remember what we're doing. You are those who have been with me. Um, Jesus, how, how often they must have heard, you love your neighbor. You don't act like this world. You love your neighbor. You even love your enemies. How often they must have heard that. Uh, the ones that persecute you and ridicule you and say evil things against you, you, you love them. And then remember how it's really cool. He would connect that to his father, which is appropriate for us in our communication today on this specific day. You love your enemies. You pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father. This is how our father does. All right. He reminds them that it's not the behavior of his disciples to one up one another to look down on another. No, this is not what his disciples do. Um, do, you, do you remember me saying just a minute ago that cringeworthy dad jokes? Remember I brought that up? And that how, I all, that how all I really want my girls to know, like I don't, I don't have to wait to tell them. All I really want them to know is how good this father is and how much he loves him, them and how much his way changes things. Like, girls, look, his, his way will change you to where you are kind to those who are unkind to you. Uh, his way will change you, and man, change me, um, to when you, you get stabbed in the back, when you get betrayed, you still love. Um, the way of God will change you, girls. I don't have to wait to tell you this. The way of God will change you to love someone who has never served you, who's never treated you kindly. You know, that, the, the little kid that runs around and picks on you, the way of God will change you to even love that kid. I, I, I share this to, to you with today as fathers who, again, are transferring these great blessings from our Father. Girls, the way of God will, will make you love people who look different. Their skin color is different. Their smell is different. Maybe the way they walk is different. The way their body works is different. The way of God will make you love them. Uh, the way of God will help you to love those who are undeserving. We, we need to hear this. Like It is really good for us to love those who have made the right choices in life, who've, who, who aren't in a season of mistake, and ruin that it might be their own fault. It's really easy for us to love those people. The way of God will help us to love the negligent. Man. Sons of your father. Uh, the way of God, I know this is not, this, uh, the way of God will help us love the criminal. It's not easy, but, it, but, it, but he will. It will. The way of God will help us to love those who sin openly who abort their babies, who abuse their kids, who ruin and dissolve families, who disrespect authorities. Like this is the way of God. And, and again, and it, and it, and it, and it breaks down, like, like our worldly way of thinking breaks down when we realize that, that God loves us all and he wants us all and he cares about us all. There's no, there's no ranking of us in this room. New, old, young, you're welcome. You're welcome. And so again, like, dad jokes, I'll hold some of those off. This stuff, dads, no, today, like, okay? And it's very true that Judas Iscariot was at this table. It's very, that's very true. Sometimes I think we forget this. It's very true that Judas was at the table. And in all the ways I can get really upset and really frustrated and think people have treated me wrong, there ain't nobody who has betrayed me to death. There's nobody who's done that. And Jesus knew it. He knew it. And yet he teaches us this lesson and washes even Judas' feet. Okay, I could argue, I didn't, but I could argue that the whole point of, of this text is for the express purpose of, ch of, 
of proving that Jesus' followers will serve even their worst of enemies. I didn't focus on that today, but I think we could. We could prove that the direct purpose of this text is to prove that those who follow Jesus will bless and serve and love even their worst haters and enemies and backbiters and betrayers. Okay? We're, we're about to wrap up. I'm, I'm really at the end here. Go to Luke. Uh, d- let me just finish the little, te- the little reading here, okay? Uh, beginning in verse 28. It says, <clears throat> You are those who have stood by me in trials. Man, I love that. He didn't flip out with them. <laughs> you are those, let me remind you who you are. You are those who have stood with me in trials. And just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I grant you that you may eat and drink at my table. What more could we want in my kingdom? And you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, Again, Jesus was gentle, a fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. He was gentle. Um, Verse 28, remember who you guys are. You're those who have stood by me. You've seen my way on full display, I wrote in my notes. And you know that the gift is the kingdom. You know you have a seat at my table. And you have a position of leadership that far surpasses any other of this world. That's, that's, that's where I'll leave that 12 tribes part. I think he's definitely not indicating to them, be humble now so that <clears throat> you can rank over people later. I think he's indicating to them, stay humble now and be admired by those and be trusted by those who are seeking God. I think that's what he's probably indicating there. Guys, listen to me. Do it my way and you'll lead even the tribes of Israel. <laughs> I love it. Okay? Jesus is saying this to them, okay? It must um, have been something that stuck with them. Um, the, other, the other gospel accounts will include some of this language, which, which that's why I know this must have stuck with them. This must have been implanted in their heart, okay? These men would be, again, trusted and equipped to serve, again, even while Jesus saw them bickering and arguing and disputing He reminded them who they are. He reminded them of their purpose. There's going to be time and occasion where it's really a struggle to do this church thing. Y'all know that. I don't have to tell you that. It's been tough. It's been really tough. Um, But maybe just a message this morning that reminds us to love everybody. Serve everybody. Nobody's above another. We're all in this together. Okay? We're going to bicker and argue and have our little spouts. That's true. But don't ever think for a minute that you don't have a place in this kingdom. This is the message of this text. Okay? Um, John would say something, again, in 13, that I want to emphasize. When Jesus was washing those guys' feet, you remember he and Peter kind of go back and forth for a minute. I love it. Peter says, you are not washing my feet, Lord. That's probably what I would have told him, too. I got bad feet, by the way. Like, you ain't touching my feet. You remember what Jesus said. You don't understand this now. You will later. If, if I don't wash your feet, you got no part in me. And then you remember what Peter says? Don't you love this? He said, well, then wash my whole body, Lord. Like, I'm all in. You know what? And then Jesus said this. Jesus had to smile there, don't you think? I mean, he had to just love that guy and smile. And then, and then Jesus goes to this. He says, hey, again, my, my paraphrase, I'm reading into this, but I just love this guy. Hey, Peter, he who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. Okay? I think this is an indication to Peter, again, hey, man, remember who you are. You've been with me. You trust me. You've walked with me. You're, you're bathed, so to speak. I love connecting that to baptism. You know, this, this, this linear idea. When you, when you give your life to Christ and are baptized, you are expressing your all-in trust for Jesus as your Savior and Redeemer, the one who washes your sins. I think that's what Jesus is saying here. Hey, man, you've been with me. You remember who you are. You're bathed, brother. All right? Now let me wash your feet. Let me show you what it means to be all in. It means to serve and to love all these kinds of folks we've been talking about who are no better than we are, no worse than we are. 
I love you guys. It's good to be here. I'm so thankful to serve in the kingdom with you. And I can genuinely say that I would love nothing more than to have this family grow by those who are ready and willing to respond to this gospel of Jesus and to live according to his way. That's the invitation. It's open to you every time we sing after this lesson, and it doesn't even matter. Any and all times it's open. So if you want to respond to it now, do it. We'll receive you. We're going to stand and sing as Danny leads us. Love you guys. Hear you not the invitation, oh, prepare to meet thy God. Careless soul, oh, heed the warning, for your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad you face the judgment, unprepared.
Uh, before we begin, does everyone have their communion? If not, if you'll raise your hand, we'll be sure and get you one. Uh, let's see, this is always a very humbling experience for me to be asked to do this and to, uh, to represent this memorial. Um, I always have so many things I want to say and so many things come to mind that uh, I try to condense them down into something uh, that represents my thoughts. Uh, so if you all bear with me this morning. Uh, Jesus was always about doing the will of his father. As a young boy around the age of 12, he traveled to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. When it was time to return, he stayed behind. They returned to Jerusalem to find Jesus in the temple. When asked why he did this, in Luke 2.49, he responded, Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? He was always about his father. <clears throat> he continued, Luke tells us, to increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God. In Luke, the scripture goes forward to the baptism of Jesus, after which we are told he was praying and heaven was opened. The Holy Spirit de descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came out of heaven saying, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. It was always about doing the will of his Father. Right after this, in Luke 4 and 8, when he was being tempted by Satan to worship him, Jesus responds by saying, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Scripture gives us many references to the desire and sole purpose of Jesus to carry out the will of his Father and to glorify him. In Hebrews 2, uh, 10, 5 and 7, the writer is referring to a Psalm 40, 6 through 8, which was by David, but the writer of Hebrews is attributing this forward to Christ when he says, Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written, To do your will, O God. Everything about Jesus' life centered around his Father. He told his disciples in John chapter 4, My, God, or my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Later in John 15 and 10, uh, 
he's talking about a relationship with believers can have with himself when he says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus was, was recorded in Scripture so many times in prayer. We don't always know what he was praying about. However, some are explained for our understanding. Jesus loves his Father, and he wants us to love him also. If you'll go with me over into John chapter 17, where Christ is praying, I want to just point out some of the things where he uh, is talking to his to his father in verse 3 he says this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent I glorified you on the earth pardon me having accomplished the work which you have given me to do now father glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. On down below that and continuing chapter 17, part of verse 6, I just wanted to point through the chapter, I wanted to point out some more of the places where he uh, gives all the credit to his father. Always about his father. Uh, he says, You gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me. Uh, on down in verse 9 and 10, he says again, For they are yours, and all the things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine. Over in 14, he tells them, I have given them your word. 17, he says, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. 22, the glory which you have given me. He thought nothing of himself. He knew everything come from his Father. The second part of verse 23 says, So that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you have loved me. Uh, and 24, so that they may see my glory which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. Uh, and then he ends in the end of 18. He says, so, the, so that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. Christ knew that everything was from his Father and to his Father and for his Father. I want to finish up over in Matthew in 26 when... We all know the prayers that Jesus had in the garden. He went back three times each time. And uh, verse 38 of chapter 26, he says, uh, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. In 39, he fell to his face and prayed, saying, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And then in uh, 42 again, he says the same thing again. He's praying, Father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Uh, Jesus was never about anything but doing his Father's will. Uh, and glorifying his father he knew what the will of his father was going to bring him but his desire was to glorify his father <clears throat> this brings us to this memorial our lord and savior came to the cross for our sins jesus lovingly accepted this burden selflessly if you all would get your emblems ready uh, for the bread if you'll bow with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we, uh, we just thank you so much for, for your son. Uh, dear Lord, he accepted 
such a heavy burden. The Lord uh, weighed on him so heavily. Lord, he uh, he shouldered that burden for each and every one of us, Lord, and to uh, to glorify Your name and to offer us eternal life. Lord, as we partake of this bread, which represents our Savior's body, that was hung on that cruel cross, Lord, uh, for our sins. Pray that we do so in a way that's well pleasing in your sight. It's in his name we pray. Amen. If you'll bow with me again. Dear Heavenly Father, as we continue this memorial. Lord, I pray that um, we can focus our minds, center our hearts on, on the blood that was shed on that cross for our sins, Lord. Lord, this uh, fruit of the vine that we're about to take is um, representative of that. Lord, I pray that uh, we search our hearts and we search our minds and uh, we partake of in a way that's well pleasing in your sight. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. If y'all will indulge me for just one more second, I thought that that song that Danny led was uh, was really good. I liked the uh, end of the first verse when it said, And pour contempt on all my pride. And then in the last uh, verse, it ended, love so amazing, so divine, divines my soul, my life, my all. there any other announcements? Thankful for all of our visitors that came our way and thankful for all our members that came our way. Uh, got a late note, Charles and Betty Vaughn, today is their 58th anniversary. So, congratulations. Um, I've never led this song. I thought about asking Mark to do it. He always leads this song. So, would you please stand and... Uh, uh, See how it goes. <laughs> Love one another.
Let us bow, please. Dear Father, thank you so much for your wonderful love and for your son, Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross. And as a father, I really do not understand and probably will never comprehend how, how you could let your son die in such a cruel way. But dear Father, I also don't understand your fullness of love I don't understand your forgiveness that you have. Dear Father, help us to become better, better examples. Thank you for the men, dear Father, on this Father's Day that have been examples to me and examples to others on how they should uh, approach you and the struggles that we all go through. And dear Father, thank you for the moms that how to raise kids without fathers. Thank you, dear Father, for your wonderful love. Dear Father, just be with us and help us to be good dads, good fathers. Help those, Lord, to be good mothers. And dear Father, just help us to be better servants. Help us, Lord, to serve others and to be cheerful. And dear Father, every day, every Sunday especially, but every day in our life, help us to remember those fruits of the Spirit that we need to have at all times. When we struggle, and when we don't struggle, and when we're happy, help us, Lord, to show forth the things that we need to. Dear Father, your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>